there's so much that goes into live streaming. It's not just us singing these songs and going mental. Almost every hour of our waking time is spent doing things for the on-screen time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Charlie Tyler podcast, Little Voices. So today we're going to talk about the realities of entertaining online and being a live streamer. Woo! Well, where do you want to start? <sighs> well, it's been one of the most amazing experiences for me. The reality of it, though, <laughs> is it's a big mixture of... It's an emotional roller coaster, emotional and physical roller coaster, which for me has been a very new thing. I've yes. not I've not been involved with something before where you feel so supported and then scrutinized by different sets of people at the very same time. Yeah. That's the big truth about online streaming, live streaming in particular. Um we've not been I mean, I don't know when on earth someone classes themselves as an influencer. I think that's like a kind of soft core I don't bizarre, like that word. Like modern term. It doesn't really like there's nothing what really. What do we behind call ourselves? It. Social media entertainers. That's what yeah, we because say. That's what we do. Yeah. And I guess the whole influencer um thing came about as a way of labelling people that were known online. It feels very thin. What we do is we influencing entertain. people. I mean but what we, does that even mean? Yeah, but entertainment in a in a sense is influencing. It is it, it is, is. Yeah, part yeah. of people's lives. Yeah, and I do structure. get it. But... So the reality yeah, I mean, but you know. We never think of ourselves like no, that. No, no, no. But you get to a point where we have a, a large amount of people that are looking at what we do. Mm. So the realities of that as live streamers, we know a little bit about. We know less about the long form because we've just not really done it very long. Yeah. But um, the live stream for me, yeah, it's live streaming is a massive roller coaster physically and emotionally. And holding that together day after day is um, is a challenge. Yeah, I would I would say the same cuz I think there's there's so much that goes into live streaming. Like it's not just us like everyone sees us just standing on the screen mm. singing these songs and going mental and having loads of fun, but like fundamentally like the work that goes into actually making that and yeah. and everything in in behind the scenes is it is the iceberg effect. Yeah. I'd say almost every hour of our waking time is spent doing things for the on-screen time. So how 100%. long have we streaming on TikTok now? Like how long have we been day? on TikTok? Or no, how every often? day. It's like we... We try, to do, we try to do two streams every day of some kind. Yeah, so, they, so we're really only on the camera for about three, four hours maximum Now we are. We used to be on a lot, lot more because yeah. we weren't doing anything else. We were just doing TikTok, weren't we? So three or four hours a day of live streaming feels more intense now than like the eight hours we did when we first came on the platform. Yeah. Um, and I feel that like, the, it's really weird. Like, so when I, when I, I spend most of my adult life making, being a record producer, composer. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know what, I, <laughs> I call myself a composer because that's the only thing that really sums up everything. Yes. And, you know, you make music and then you're doing something with it. So you're working with a band or a singer or it's your own thing or you're going out and playing a show. Things are a lot more methodical. They're more like, this is this, and this is this, and then someone doesn't like that, or someone loves that, and that's a surprise, and someone brings you a song. And you kind of get into a system of how it works. Yep. But live streaming is the complete opposite. No matter how hard you prepare or have doesn't discussions, matter. it doesn't matter. When that camera goes on, it you can have a very quiet live stream. It's very, <laughs> well, by our standards, like sedate and like a normal show. And it'd be really enjoyable. Or 100%. Actually, that's funny that you say it, yeah. that. And they can be just as enjoyable as when it goes completely insane, especially if if, if, it, if someone's watching it hasn't seen TikTok Live before. Yeah. Go and check out what we do on TikTok Live. My favourite comments are when it's absolutely kicking off in the stream and someone comes in and goes, what am I watching? Like, what is going yeah, on? Because you can get caught in the... you get You land in the moment of something that's already happened. But we always say we don't know what's going on either. So, like... No. Because we don't. No. I think that's the funny, the funnest part about TikTok Live with the gifting and et cetera and the reactions and the confetti cannons and the screaming and shouting about whales and all that stuff. It's great fun. 
And every single time you go into it, it's like you're having to improvise the whole show again. So yeah. Someone can send... The thing about live streaming, the reality of is that, is that you can have a really... You can be absolutely exhausted and just think, I'm doing this because all these people are so generous to us. I mean, yeah. we're having fun, but man, like, I, I'm knackered. Yeah. And someone can say something in the comments, not necessarily a gift, and it completely changes the, the temperature of, of the live stream. So you can get energy out of nowhere, and you can also get that's depression out weird. of nowhere Oh, as my well. God, that's what's so weird. Yeah. Like, it's so up and down. Like, you never know. Firstly, the first, like, it's kind of, I feel, <laughs> I get a bit of a thrill from it, but I see live streaming, like, before we go live, I, it's like a little, like, kinder surprise, because you don't know what's going to happen when you press go live. <laughs> There are these eggs. If you're outside of Europe, <laughs> there are these chocolate eggs with toys in the middle of them. So you buy the chocolate. And, and you don't know what toy you're going to get. Inside. And it's like that because you don't know. No. We could press go live and mon like monetization aside, it could be just like, just a shit show. Like it just, you just feel, it just feels not great. And, you know, the vibe's not there and the chat doesn't feel amazing or there's loads of trolling. But then other times you could press go live and it could kick off. You might still not be feeling it, but then other times you're feeling it and it kicks yeah. off. It's a bit like when Sander sends a uni at the front of a show. I mean, how do you, like, <laughs> what's so mentally, how do you emotionally prepare yourself for that? I don't know. Like, you can't. And I think the thing that a lot of, I mean, what I'm hoping with this, that a lot of our fans get the response back is how much their involvement means to us. Oh, my goodness. Because it, it literally makes our livelihood worth doing. And it's not. It isn't. And this is not to do with gifting. This is to do with with being there, being encouraging, enjoying it, um, adding the humour in, the entertainment. Yeah. And obviously, the gifting is currently at this rate our full time income. So that part is obviously incredible, and it allows us to build everything that we're doing. The only reason we can do this is because of gifting. So yeah. So that's how important it is to what we do. But yeah. when you look at it, when I had to go live when you'd lost your voice, and I was in a pub. <laughs> and Sanders sent that uni. It's got two name drops at the moment. You kind of look at it and you go, "That the level of support is so insane." As everyone has given us, um, people knocking us off our chairs with lines or whatever it is, yeah. or just a hand heart, or it's it means so much, and people don't really get it. But live streaming is stressful because you're as a community, you're kind of like pulling pulling the show together like that all the time. Yep. And the more I think about TikTok Live, the more it's about Every single time I go back to that app, it's always just about community. 100%. Like the Discord afterwards can be just as important as the show. Yeah. And it's really weird. So, like, everyone's overall involvement makes it what it is. And funnily enough, like, we have such an amazing community that when we're not feeling 100%, yeah. they do pick it up. 100%. But man, it's stressful. In yeah. the best possible way, it's, it is an absolute friggin' nightmare. It is. I think, like, I think, like you say, what happens in like a day before a stream, for example. So like whatever happened this morning or like yeah. in an evening before a show, like you have to just ignore that yeah. and just go, hello, TikTok, because mm -hmm. like you don't realise how much you're giving the people on the other side of the screen just yeah. by being there. And I don't think that's TikTok specific either. I think if we went no, onto anything. any app, if we went like YouTube Live, which we'll probably try, Facebook Live, these all these apps have live features. Yeah. I think now we understand a lot more about what it is that we give to people. And that's... I think it's all about being real, especially on all platforms. I think, I think the thing with TikTok Live is there's so much nonsense on it that yeah. we're not going to get into, but... <laughs> I think people come into our room and like they always say like you guys just bring so much joy and like uh, it's yeah. such a positive uplifting stream so we don't ever feel like not that we would but go on there and just like you know turn it into something something neg negative yeah I think the app innately with TikTok feeds off the stirring unfortunately that gets started with drama and negativity yeah. I don't know whether that's just TikTok I have a sneaky suspicion that it's just people on the internet it definitely is people on the internet and i think tiktok's just a good way of of, of doing that and also the, and we're on it though we are on it more so we're liking it we yeah. are aware of that so comments can really hurt or they can really uplift creators i think oh, people don't really see that the trolling um, and the trolling but for us we where we've the react like going back to like the the title of this podcast right if people really want to know what it's like Every single thing matters and doesn't matter at the same time. 
And if you can get yourself into a mental space where you realise that people are there to support you yep. and people are there to bring you down, you can start not really taking it that seriously. And the true fandom of people that do support us, all the people watching this, they know who they are yeah, and yeah. we know who they are. Yeah. And we're just trying to build that. But the reality is it's like the Christmas show. I mean, oh, no, no, no. Here's a worse one, the Viner Room. Okay, carry on. When I was setting up the Viner Room, I could have had a heart attack. Oh, it was really bad. I was under so <laughs> much pressure. I, I think. I don't mean to laugh, but it was like probably the most stressful I've ever seen you. Yeah, and that went on King's for weeks. Cross. That was like two weeks of absolute hell. Yeah. And it was so worth it. But when you're trying to reach to a certain, you're trying to achieve something, but we're doing it in the real, real time. So when I used to make EPs with bands... Yeah. So I used to, like a band would say, Oh, could you come and produce our EP? Yeah. We'll give you this. I'm like, Yeah, cool. It'd be like on like four or five days' work. So you just go to the studio for four or five days. Yeah. Make a recording. And you'd sit there and you make the, the music, and hopefully the people you're working with were decent. And usually, you know, I was lucky enough to work with a lot of really good people. Yeah. So it was always quite a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but, but it, was, it was fun. But there was no, you were just in, you were like in a science lab. You were just there, kind of, if you had, if and you, made you, know mistakes, if you, yeah, you know what the job is. You know what the job is. You're making mistakes. You know, what, you know what you're trying to achieve. So if the snare, snare sounds crap, you just find another snare drum or tune it differently. No one hears that. That's what you were doing with with the group, or maybe a singer hits like you know singing too sharp, or the yeah. lyrics aren't that great, and you need to revise them. No one sees that part mm -hmm. on TikTok. They do, maybe not necessarily always the recording elements, but respectively, like there are sometimes when I'm like playing my guitar and like my arms are really knackered from yeah. yesterday, yeah. and I'm just like I just can't really play that fast anymore. Um, <laughs> but, but the world is seeing it. Um, yeah, like when I do those comedy sketches for the Leon and. Uh, lying game. I feel like people don't know how you're putting that together no because that's all improvised you make it up yeah. from scratch so that horror story in itself <laughs> so we came up with this idea this is this would be a really good little conversation mm. right we came up with this idea because that's one of the biggest gifts on TikTok yep. it costs people a lot of money let's just get to the point Yeah. so I, was, I wasn't having it I was like there's no <laughs> way that someone is spending that kind of money and not getting something out of it mm-hmm because that's insane. Yep. So we came up, I can't quite remember how we came up with it, but I decided that... You I was, just did it like literally a two minute Lion King like sketch. Yeah. You just sketched the and first it, bit. And it went from just being a parody of the Lion King because it's associated with the graphic of the lion. So we just thought, oh, that's what that is. And everyone started enjoying it. And then it just went off into <laughs> this whole thing called story time, complete parody. It was like a kind of like Saturday Night Live SNL style comedy sketch. Um, or there's a, there's that program in America who it's called Whose Line Is It Anyway? Have you ever right, seen it? no. And it's just uh, like a panel comedians and they pick a line out of a hat and they have to make up a sketch. That's so cool. And it's called Whose Line Is It Anyway? We used to have it, um, I can't remember the TV program in the UK that doing it or, or doing it. I, I, remember I like that idea, that's really cool. Um, so we, we've got our equivalent over here in the UK. Um, and I kind of, in my head, thought, well, they're doing it, so there must be a way of doing it. And then, then I started doing the comedy sketches. But the stress of doing the comedy sketches, there's no prep. So I just do it. And then if it's not very good, I'm standing there. And, the, <laughs> and the room numbers we've had for some of these things are insane. Do you remember that time we had like 650 people watching me do yeah. it? Yeah. And we were, up, we were up in like the top 10, weren't we? I remember that. And it's like a meme though because people come into our feed and like and then Ferrari it's sent just one. a joke no, and you've got a line on your head Ferrari sent one and then I did the sketch and we were up in the top 10 I think yep. and there were a lot of people in the room and I'm just making up shit like <laughs> just about whatever And it, but it works it works really um, well yeah. that was the theme park one where it started off going to the theme park but never the, the never got, to, never the got the to the theme park I thought it was that, that yeah and it didn't it start in the theatre or something yeah or something I can't remember um, so th the realities are when you're online, when you are an online entertainer, that is exactly what you're doing all the time. That, and that's an amazing privilege to be in this position. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But it's like, it is absolutely nonstop. I think because as well, when we add in new music, like we really, really don't rehearse that very much at all. No, because well, we don't have time. We don't have time to do the type of rehearsal that would be necessary. When I used to rehearse the band, we used to rehearse. Yeah. Hours and hours. Yeah. I mean, the amount of rehearsal time we've done with a band, we've brought in one week of rehearsal of the last carnival is probably the entire amount of rehearsal we've ever done for Charlie Tyler. Yeah. Uh, Sweet Child of Mine was the only track we've ever actually rehearsed more than about three times. Yeah. 
It's mental. And sometimes I, I have to remake my guitar parts up just by using music theory. I know it's in the key of E. I know what these chords will be. <laughs> I know what the sound of them is roughly. And I have to like reconstruct the chord. Pa- like I know what it might be. And that was really bad. That was when we started making the Varna Room and I had no time to yeah. do anything. And I was just repraising Yeah, but songs. it's terrifying because when we haven't played a song in ages and Butler's like, well, let's put this in the set list. You're like, yeah, I just need to revise this solo. And then just shred it. And you've not played it for six months. I just don't understand it. Well, I don't really understand it either. There are a lot. There are people a lot better than me at that. But it's no, it's I think, I think just that's it. um. It's the same with you when you're singing. I mean, you just like hit it bang on all the time. I think maybe one of the realities of what we have realised is that we're both probably quite good at the get up and go improvisational quality. Yeah. I think maybe on reflection and the podcast really helped with this. On reflection, we probably have traits or um, practices before prior to TikTok which probably really were the right things at the yeah. right time we hit the platform. Yeah. I said in the last episode that we weren't in the right place at the right time. I still believe that. I still think that maybe what we did by mistake was bring quite a lot of appropriate things onto it. Yeah. It wasn't there. There was nothing there like us. No. There, was still, really, there still really isn't. There's no, very there's few. Not. We've got a couple of friends on the app, which I think are doing really good things. Yeah. But not the type of... Um, I think probably the closest act on TikTok to us is Musical Chrissy. Yeah. It's, it's an interactive entertainment show. And it's quality. And she does, for those who don't know who she is, she's great. She does um, she does Disney princess characters. So it's like an interactive Disney princess. Yeah. Which I think is an amazing. It's idea. amazing. Um, singing Disney songs. Yeah. And songs from musical theatre. So, and she's got that whole thing. That, you know at Christmas you're going to tune in chrissy has got something mental on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know she's singing this and so i think she's probably the closest that that will be for for a while um and we have similarities but i I do think the it is like being in a tom like a tumble dryer like a washing machine of physical and emotional activities because you have you just can't make up any of it um that's that's the scary part of it but it's also the best part of it as well but keep that part keeps it fresh okay so what's your favorite part about live streaming and what's your least favourite part about live streaming? My favourite part about live streaming is the ability, like it always has been for me, uh, with everything I've all, always done entertainment-wise, is being able to entertain someone else there and then. Yeah. That's always been the most, that's the most fun. And the secondary thing, which is the bit I'm in love with with the internet, the bit that I'm quite romantic about, is... Live streaming gives you the ability to talk to actual human beings in real time about something that they might be interested in or something that might entertain them, make them feel better, make their day better. Yeah. Uh, maybe they're looking for like a new thing to get into. You can actually talk to those people. Yeah. One of the problems with um, this video is static. I don't know who's going to watch this. Mm-hmm. Unless, you, unless someone leaves a comment on YouTube and I get back to them. Yeah. I don't know how this but it's is not real time. somebody. So that's, that's the best thing for me. Mm-hmm. It combines the best things of what I enjoyed about gigging with um, disciplines of the internet and things you can get out of it, all the positivities. Yeah. Least favourite thing? Oh, the least the least favourite thing by far is being um, being controlled by an outside... Organisation. Organisation, yeah. That's the worst part. The worst part is having an app with app's name... And you're having to work within it. I'd much rather have a Charlie Tyler app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? I don't, I don't understand why. This is another rant, which I'll try and not make it too long. But why the hell is everyone... Why are we all putting all our stuff on, on other platforms' platforms? Because that also makes no sense, right? So they give us the ability to advertise what we do for free. And I completely respect that. But you get to a point where, like, the only downside to live streaming... But then I would expand that to socials is that when you're on one particular live streaming platform, it's a tool. Yeah. It, and, and I think the great thing about TikTok, we've got no exclusive contract with TikTok, so we can do what we want. But that's definitely the least thing. I don't, I don't, there's something innately I don't like about being tied into one application. I don't understand why one body, one group of, of one app or one piece of technology, no matter how much money they make or how powerful or influential they are, I don't like the fact that someone could just turn off our, turn off our account. Yeah, that doesn't sit right. I don't really understand it. But we are using their property. So 
I kind of get the argument, but we've seen, we've been through one generation of entertainers online, not just on TikTok, where we've seen people get their accounts shut down. Yep. Political things come inside, which we won't talk about here, but you can see how the actual app companies can control your life, essentially, which yep. is mental. And I think for live stream, where it's more, it's more dark, is that they could literally turn turn the lights off on what you're doing and then you'd have no recourse on what's going on. I think that's the only, that's the biggest worry that niggles at the back of my head. I'd much rather have a Charlie Tyler app or have our own app where we entertain people on it and bring all our friends onto that with the same type of technology. Yeah. I don't know why, and this is the one my one big advice that I've learned that is... It's probably one of the best things I've learned about being an entertainer in general, not just on the internet, is that you can't let other people dictate your value or your ownership. So if if what you if you know what you do, other people enjoy, don't start negotiating with other people about how worthwhile that is or yeah, how yeah. much worth that is. And I think that's the only issue that I have with using um, someone else's app. Yeah which is why we're spreading out to different applications because the, the, why why should someone own Charlie Tyler apart from us? I, I don't understand that. Unless, going back to the other question, you know, there's, you're getting investment in some way. But even then, it's like, you didn't make it. it you know, yeah. what, the appeal is, it's us that make it appealing. So, yeah. So what's your, what would you say is your favourite thing about live streaming then? Um, uh... My favorite thing is probably how, like, I I get like I said I get like this weird enjoyment out of not knowing what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's not my favorite part because that's so stressful. Like yeah. that that part is like, you know, crippling. It's, it's so it's really stressful. Um, but I like not knowing, um, like how the chat is gonna be because then you go into it and say you've had like a really like crappy day. And then you go onto it and then everyone's so supportive and like the community is just amazing and and they, you know, really like boost you up. Like that part is something that I haven't really found anywhere else and like I don't really... That's unique. Yeah, that's that really unique. unique. You yeah. can't just go somewhere and, and they can in instantly make you feel a lot better. Um, I think that, like you say, it's it's so unique how in real time people can interact with you and make you feel better when like something's gone wrong or, or something's not been great um and i just think that it's it's really magical to have the community there for you oh yeah i think yeah, that yeah, yeah. that's my favorite part probably and being able to do like what you love every single day not having to go anywhere and, and no kind of hassle and you just can do it at any time so i can just turn on live and just talk to yeah to everybody like literally sat in my flat. So that's probably my favourite bit. Anytime, anywhere, as long as you've got Wi Fi. Yeah. And a that phone. part I've never well, prior to TikTok, even the thought of being able to achieve that was that, that's just insane. Yeah. So what would you say that what's the worst part then? What's the bit that dread you dread the most about live streaming? Mm, I dread the most. I wake up every morning and dread TikTok live. No, I think probably the it's so consuming. It's so consuming. It's all I think about every day. So I think about when I wake up. Yeah. <laughs> this is the last thing I think about before I go to sleep. And everything in between. And I think there comes a point where I'm like, can I just put my phone in the bin and yeah. just like switch off for like thirty seconds? Mm. That I can't. That part's really hard, and I'm trying to get used to the fact that social media is 24 seven, which is fine. That's really tough to get used to, though. That, oh I God. still don't get it. I'm it's, still trying to wrap my head around that. Yeah, at least it's not me. Like not just me, because I go somewhere and I'm like, oh, I could just go live and like talk to everyone, and I'm like, no, because I'm like <laughs> trying to do something that's like yeah, yeah. recreational, mm. um, and then also like the trolls. They, they're funny and they're a lol, but it's just annoying because mm. it just kills the vibe of the chat. Like, yeah. you know, we troll the trolls and, and... Yeah, we've become a lot better at dealing with it. Um, it was awful at the beginning. I hated it. It was horrendous. I, I couldn't deal with it. how bad it was. 
you're not singing. I'm just like, Ugh. that's not even like, I don't even take that as like a, a troll thing, but I just go, You should why? see some of the troll that Big Daddy G gets. Really? He's the number one cold player in the world, basically. And people are saying, oh, you can't play cod. And you're like, are you literally stupid? endorsed by Activision. Are you mental? <laughs> he's in the top five players in the world right now. So I don't think it's just us, but I think the realities of live streaming really come down to the fact that the extremes are the things that bother you the most about it. Yeah, I think... That's the thing that really is the oddest part because the the other thing as well, to kind of close, to round that off, is that if you run like a traditional band, say, if a tour is going bad, you know it was tanking. It was really, really bad. You can like feel it. If you could accept it. Really? Oh, yeah. You just It was annoying. You'd be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you kind of knew like a gig was bad you know, oh yeah but because oh yeah I know like live show wise you so, know when something's not great and but. you know when you're writing a song and everyone's just not really plussed about it but you didn't have this constant observation from the rest of the world about like your, what was going on I yeah I feel and, that so much and I think that if if you could come to terms with the one thing I've not seen is I've not seen a band go on tour traditionally on TikTok live all the time <laughs> Like during the dressing room, during the van, I've not seen someone actually do that, and that would be fascinating because I think that would be a whole, whole exercise. In but itself. we were going through, we were going through phases where we we're doing some like similar to that. We were doing pre-show, yeah. We were doing show, having our lunch not on live for one hour, yeah. and then going back on live and then doing a chat in the evening yeah. or a debrief. And I think the community bit does make that a lot easier though because. One thing that if people are watching this that are avid watchers of us on TikTok, we yeah. love being on TikTok live. Yeah, yeah. But we don't love record. being on TikTok live. We love in we love entertaining you the guys. people on the other side yeah. of the screen. Um, the shame is just the bloody apps in the way. Yeah. Um, but we need it. It's like a necessary evil. And it, I don't think I don't think that having I think open source platforms like TikTok and YouTube and Twitter. Twitter's really really bad for this as well. Right. Having someone able to to tweet back at you when you're trying to tweet something semi serious and they they're saying something really inappropriate to the rest of the world and maybe that blows up. That can't be good for people. There's, no, there's I... not, that's not natural and I think TikTok live for all the in, the way it's changed our lives. Um I think our community, sorry, just to finish that point. For all the positives, you do get the extremes of the negative. But our community keeps us from, I think, from getting too much negative. I downfall. think we're in this like bubble where yeah. it's like our community, and then people join and they join that bubble and they understand. And the bubble it. probably gets stronger. Yeah. From that. Yeah. We but really, I, really feel that, and I don't know if the fans really see that. It's it, it, that part is the situation of being on camera every day and like even doing like makeup streams and stuff. I'm like, that's terrifying. Like fundamentally, I'm just like I'm just allowing people yeah, but it's to just go. Really not now, and it only I think the thing that's affected us the most about you know live streaming at the moment is dealing with the way that it's evolving. Rather, so now we've got this real amazing group of friends online that are kind of in this journey with yeah. us. It's like watching a it's like watching like some sort of bizarre like thing on you know. <laughs> Like, like on Netflix where you get like a whole, you know, like a big TV series gets dumped in one go. It's like watching a Netflix TV series live. Yes. Um, and funnily enough, in Douyin and other Asian apps, they actually do that. They have live theatre and live. So this, that is where it's going. Some some our viewers may have like figured out that, you know, that maybe this that's where it goes. It does. Yeah. It goes to that more literally live streaming, live improvised theatre. So, oh, I don't want to... <laughs> I can't do words very long. I can't bring myself to say it. You know those programs about those rich kids in Essex that swarm the TV like ten years ago. What yeah, was it only ways Essex. The, yeah, oh, those, I've never watched it. I'll just say it's very I don't trashy, know. But they had this. The, the what was interesting about it? I knew someone used to work on it. Work for the semi scripted. Okay. And that's interesting. The way they ran it was that they were just oh, obviously with all these things, just trash TV. Yeah, but it where the fascination for people came from is because I think that like TikTok Live, it's not necessarily the drama, it's the fact that it kind of is real but not and then you you don't really know and then here's a weird one to think about. This is fascinating. We've all become characters on a social media app. Yeah. So people call me the captain. Well, it's not even my name. And it's not necessarily just being about a pirate. The captain's become like like a personification of what I kind of represent on the app 
in a weird way. And mm. Queen CT is kind of this, if we become like these things and our friends like have become these almost like the fabric of TikTok life. We've almost become embedded within it. Yeah. It's like, like, like take Zacrobat's recent just explosion of his chat show. But he kind of will forever be known in TikTok live as the first proper chat show host. Mm-hmm. Um, and he becomes integral to the app. Because without Zacrobat, the app is empty. There's no one else to fill that gap. Um, and that that can't be underestimated how much online I think you become like a character and something that represents something. I think then moving, like, expanding on that point, like, I think at, at some points it's difficult to, like, convey that we are humans, so yeah, we're actual people yeah. stood on the other yeah. side of the screen. It hurts when I scream. It's not. Just, it's not just a trick. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not I know. like I think that's the thing that is difficult. But we do have a very amazing group of people that support us financially and and physically and emotionally through it, Brian, um, <laughs> with the knees. <laughs> so, but no. In all seriousness, it is definitely. Um, it's definitely a big challenge to get, to get all the pieces of the puzzle together. When so, when someone logs in, they see Queen CT. It is for everyone's entertainment, but it, but you have become more than just Charlie. Tyler yeah, but the expectations Cornwall. are mental. Yeah. Oh, I will say that. And you do get it from. You know, I'm expected to sing like the the show. I mean, and it's, it's not mental. it's not just the fan base TikTok themselves. So we had a we've had rival apps come to see us and talk to us, but they see us as these people. They reference us. As this, as these, so you immediately start relationships with people, and I'm sure celebrities get this as well. Yep. And we're not celebrities, you know. If you, if you, if Johnny Depp walked through the door, you just think he's Johnny Depp, but that's not the same as John from wherever he is in America. Yeah, like that he will see himself as that, and in that court case, he was all he was saying was that he could just cannot believe how lucky he's been in his life because yeah. I don't know if you know anything about his past, but he's been in. I think every year of his life, he's been in some sort of major piece of long form in his life and he's in his 60s now so he walked literally from one blockbuster film to the next and even when he went out of that world he was still doing things that had major so he's just walking around just becoming more famous and we're in like a tiny 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 little scale of that um so i think yeah the extremes probably sum it up the extremes of it are very apparent for live streamers um and we can't really talk for long form because this is like the first year we've ever actually mm. sat down and made something over 10 minutes long. So yeah. I guess we'll see what happens if this continues to grow in the future of what we think of that. But I'm sure it's the same thing. Can you imagine being Emma Chamberlain? What? How old is she? Yeah. 25 or something? She's my age. Oh, she's 23? I don't know. I don't know how you dealt with it. At least I've been around the block a few more times. It's, and I've, I've had You kind of have to, really, don't you? I mean, yeah, it's, it's weird, but not live streaming. Like I said, I could just turn it off. You get in the yeah. van and then that's it. When you're playing live shows, it, it you can split the two a lot easier. But when there's live streaming and it's like, when are you next on? Or like, which I don't mind. Like, absolutely not. That's like amazing. I, yeah. It's amazing. But you kind of go, uh, yeah, yeah, I can go on, but like, you know, I, don't, I feel a bit shit today or like, I don't, I don't want to do that or whatever. And you feel this like obligation to mm. entertain. And yeah. I'm like, I can't even entertain myself right now. Yeah. So, and then when you wrap that up with some of the behaviors of the creators and the trolling and the app, it, it it's very, um, I think where, where I've been very proud of us and the people that work with us and our tiny team, we've been very good at, we've been very affected a few times. There's been a few things that have happened that really derailed us. Yeah, we, we've stayed out of most of it. Yeah, I think there's no inclination to get involved with mm. with that stuff. I think that's different to live streaming. I'm not sure that with. I know that those are infamous spats on YouTube between big creators. Yeah, but they're not piling into each other. Yeah, on but live come on, it's publicity, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's again, not Johnny down the road telling you that you're <laughs> shit at singing. No, like no. when you get stuff like that, you just go. The thing that the thing that always gets me, and I say it quite a lot, is why when. Why do trolls come into our feed, for example, and say, yeah. you can't sing or you're shit? Why, why do they say that when they know blatantly that it's not? They know that you can sing. They know that you can play the guitar. Yeah, but we don't respond to them. We just mute them and hit the thing and it says, see ya. Yeah. 
Whereas, like, I never see, like, I'm all for everyone giving everything a go. Yeah. Like, if you want to do something, even if you can't do it or you're never good at it, like, that's okay. Do it. Do, yeah. it. do what you want to do. But say, for example, like, I don't know, someone's giving singing a go. Yeah. And it's their first ever, say, singing live stream or something. You don't ever see, you never ever see trolls in there. No. You never see trolls giving yeah. people that can't, like <laughs> can't do something I don't want to I don't want to yeah. be like rude or anything but like you know what I mean yeah. and you go you wouldn't say that to them because you don't want to hurt their feelings but you say that to someone that can sing and try and hurt their feelings as well yeah. so why why I, I just I sh- as a human can't understand why people do that well you're not that type of person but I've never you know I, I, I don't understand it either um you're not going to say to a professional like artist, like you can't paint, and then they're like selling their paintings for like thousands of pounds. Yeah, it, I think that's a bizarre. I've ne- yeah, you're right. I, I don't understand what I understand. Some people find it funny now and then, but you do have people like that one person that came in that, that had eight troll accounts. And they just kept flipping. Through. Yeah. What the fuck is that? But what are you doing? What you what? can have a max of eight accounts on your on your one phone and one device, and she had max them out. You I mean, see what's wrong with people? I know. No, I just yeah. don't understand that part. No. And, and not quite, in a disrespectful way. And we're quite way. young to live streaming. So we're referencing Gal again, because he's one of the only few people that we know that has been doing live stream for like seven years now. Man, he's tough. Yeah. It, nothing phases that guy. I think... If we- you're watching this, Gal, like, you are hard. Like, how... But, it's, but he always said, he's always taught us... I remember when he sat us down, and he told us in Miami, he was talking about the whole thing. He's like, he's so water off a duck's back like we say in the UK like when something hits you just rolls straight off yeah he's so amazing maybe it's because he was a boxer as well maybe there's Mm. a lot of that but I don't think it is I think he's learned that with live streaming it's just the extremes are so up and down it's open warfare so open warfare I think we've dealt with it with it really well though I don't think we've ever like lost our heads no at trolls or anything I've had to speak up a few times yeah but, but like bullies in a playground, someone somewhere has got to call it out. That's probably. Do you know what I'm going to say? Because it's not. This isn't going to be on TikTok. That's the one problem with TikTok that I think needs changing. There isn't enough calling out of the outrageousness on that platform. I just think it's ridiculous. Like, and I'm not going to say names. I'm going to say what I'm even talking about. But everyone that uses TikTok Live knows the type of thing I'm talking about. It just doesn't get called out. People just get away with it day after day after day. And then uh, acts like us actually suffer because we can't actually get the room because we don't sit there and provide drama. Yeah, and I think that part as live streamers, the amazing plus side, you when you switch to other rooms or, you know, you're on the app by accident, you know, just kind of get on it and then blah, 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 mm. and you see it and you go, there's 400 people watching this. Yeah. You think... Not and you don't you don't want to affect you, but it does because that's the only thing I think live streaming is the is it's obviously the closest you get to in real life involvement. Yeah. But I still think it's different because the randomization of, of live streaming, the chaos of it, is what is what makes it exciting. But it's also what makes it kind of like evil in a way because like it's, it's weird. You just get the best. You don't. That's walk the down, app, you though. You never walk down the street with four hundred people watching you. No, but no I think it's the that. app because you don't know what you're going to scroll onto. You don't know what you're going to come no. onto on live, and I think that subconsciously like messes. Like I know personally, like I go, well, why am I feeling like stressed? Like what? What? Nothing's yeah. happened, and then I go, oh, but maybe this is like what's yeah. caused it because I saw I, this on TikTok think, and it's messed my brain up. I, th- I think if there were more, if there are better creators on live, doing more inclusive content and i think if there was generally better uh, usage of the app yeah and i think this has been the way that the one thing about youtube for example that i love is yeah. how it's evolved yeah it's got really good i love how people use youtube youtube is much it's kind of like people look at youtube now and go i've got to do something decent and that's, I know, right, okay, yeah, but there's, I, know, but, uh, I, know, there's, I know there's thousands of channels of absolute nonsense on this thing. Yeah. But I do think that people culturally, I think they look at YouTube and they go... That's the elite. Yeah. YouTube is the elite. That's, the, that's the, the main one. But I do think there are areas of TikTok, I will say, that you find a page and you're like, this is epic. Like, yeah. this is really, really good. This is like... And this isn't like production quality or it's, it's not no, to do with just m- like, how much things cost or anything like that. It's, it's literally just what the subjects yeah. are. Yeah. It's interesting. It's great for charity work, which is mad. 
TikTok is amazing for charity organisations. There's something about the chaos of TikTok that works great for charity involvement. Yeah. And it's so easy to get involved, isn't it? Yeah. So, like I said, but then again, that's an extreme high, isn't it? So you can yeah. you can raise a lot of money for charity and be involved in something that really makes that a difference. That was amazing. That's that's yeah. something amazing that's come out of TikTok yeah. for but us. They are extreme events. I think that's maybe through talking it through. That's the thing about live streaming, but that's the reality. You get ultra highs, like being in Miami Live Fest with people from Japan, South America, you know, and, and in all parts of Europe coming up to us. Some some yeah. can't even speak English, Charlie. Yeah. And they're like, we watch your live streams. And we're like, we can't even communicate with you because I don't speak like Mandarin. Like, yeah. And that was happening. And then you go all the way down to that nonsense with um, the Creative Breakthrough program, which really rocked our community. That massively like, oh. Yeah, I felt And the humanisation part after that. has gone. And that's the thing that can give you... Like, you know, I never talk about mental health or anything like that. And I have an issue with it. I just, I just never naturally yeah, yeah. never bring it up. But yeah. that, if there is anything, if there's, a, if there's one app that's going to destroy your mental health, it's definitely TikTok. 100%. That's yeah. why I never went on it in the beginning. Yeah. Just kept away from it because I didn't need to be on it. Um, but we found a way of using it as a, we still feel, to round it off, we still feel that TikTok, they've been very helpful for us. They've been very helpful with us. Yeah, to yeah, do yeah. do what we do. Yeah, 100%. Um, they've never, they've, Barring a few activities, they've not really brought us down in any any way directly. We've never had anything like that. They've no. actually been really supportive of us. Yeah. So and the people that work there. So that's not an issue. But what I would say, and my advice would be to anyone that live streams on any platform, it's what you do on it, and it's what you the universe you build, and you've got to stand in that. And if you don't, if you get outside of that, then there's nothing, there's no walls to break it down. With YouTube, you can see the videos and you can see how it's laid out. You put it in playlists, you can like it, you can delete videos, you can edit it, you yeah, can change yeah. the profile. TikTok Live, you just turn the camera on Hello. and then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> um, that's why the room here is like our own little universe that we've designed. Yeah. There is something weird about when you walk into this room. Yeah. I think, do you feel it's that? It's got like an energy to it now. Yeah. It's very weird. Even like, even just as a workspace, yeah. it's, it's got that. It's not us, it's, it's the room. There's yeah. something weird about it. But I've, I've found that over the past 18 months, you do kind of get like actually really unemotional to it. So when certain things happen or certain people come back that you've not yeah. seen for a long time that were really supportive of you, um, that's a massive boost because like TikTok is so mentally like, you know, it pulls you every which way. Um I just kind of, I'm like this now. Whereas like, yeah. sometimes the highs are so high that they're like pinging you up there. But I've kind of managed to get it to a point where like... And that's the community. Yeah. That's the community and our idea. So, yeah. The realities of live streaming. We made it through. It's a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed, please hit the like button and subscribe below. And if you want to see every episode of our podcast, head over to Patreon right now where you can see the full library.